Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's session, we will be diving into the world of uh, AWS Lambda, which is the powerhouse of uh, serverless computing. So whether you're uh, preparing for an interview or you're just curious about um, the Lambda service, then you're in the right place. So in today's session, we'll look at top 10 uh, interview questions that you can expect as part of your uh, Lambda service. Now, Lambda is a very important service that you have in AWS uh, in terms of serverless approach. And uh, this is a service uh, where you can definitely expect some uh, interview questions. Um, so the first question we have is, again, starting off with your basics, which is a what is AWS Lambda? Now, AWS Lambda, that's your um, serverless computing service. Now, what that means is, we don't have to manage the servers needed to uh, run your code. The service itself will take care of provisioning and managing the servers for us. So we don't have to um, worry about uh, setting up the CPU, the storage, the RAM. We don't have to worry about any of those things. So we don't have to manage the servers at all. Uh, the Lambda service itself will automatically scale uh, based on the application, based on the response. To the incoming traffic and with this we're only going to pay for the um, capacity that we are going to consume so the cpu the ram the storage whatever we are going to consume we're only going to pay for that so we don't have to manage any of these uh, capacity everything will be managed by your lambda and that is where it is known as your serverless approach where we don't have to manage any servers moving on to the next question uh, how does AWS Lambda work? So uh, AWS Lambda, it, it simply works um, by allowing us to upload our code. So whatever uh, uh, application code that you have, you can go ahead and upload that. So here, if I, let's say, I'll click on create application and uh, uh, we fill in the details. So let's say we'll go with the uh, demo and this is my runtime i'll talk about this in in some time and then for now just i'll click on create function and the next thing we have is um, uh, giving our application code so what are the application code you have you can start giving that application code uh, within this lambda function so here the this is where you can give your um, uh, code so that's how your lambda function works so all we have to do is um, give our um, uh, code in the form of a function and then lambda will take care of everything the infrastructure needed to uh, run that code so we don't have to worry about that so now once you're done creating this lambda functions there are different different ways that you can trigger this or execute this uh, lambda functions uh, one way you have is by making use of your aws services so when you go to your lambda functions so here you can see this add uh, trigger and um, here you should be able to see all the different ways of how you can uh, trigger or execute this uh, lambda function so you can use uh, other aws services there are other options as well that are available we can also do a http requests and we can also schedule uh, these uh, lambda functions so we can uh, um, have these lambda functions with cloudwatch events we can schedule it in cloudwatch and then cloudwatch will start uh, triggering these lambda functions based on the schedule that we have defined okay so that's how you can uh, trigger your lambda functions the next question we have is what is the maximum execution time for an aws lambda function now whenever we create a lambda function there is a maximum execution time that is available and that is uh, 15 minutes by uh, the maximum your lambda function can execute is for 15 uh, minutes so default is three seconds so whenever you create your lambda functions uh, uh default uh, you get is three seconds so this timeout that you see that means uh, this lambda function should complete um, within three seconds but you can always um, uh, change this you can uh, set this to a maximum of uh, 15 minutes the next question we have is how does aws lambda differ from uh, uh, ec2 instance now your ec2 instance is also your uh, servers all right and uh, lambda is also your server but What's the difference between them? So, like I said, your Lambda, it follows your serverless approach. So, uh, we don't have to manage the servers. The Lambda automatically takes care of managing these uh, uh, capacity for us. So, it automatically scales and executes the code in response to events. So, uh, we as a users, we don't have to manage the capacity. Everything is taken care by your Lambda. So, that's your serverless approach. Your EC2, on the other hand, uh, we have to manage everything. So we have to do the manual provisioning, the manual scaling 
uh, we have to manually manage these uh, servers so that's your ec2 instance so lambda is also your server capacity ec2 is also your server capacity but with your lambda it's a serverless approach we don't have to manage the capacity ec2 it's your manual approach we will have to manage the capacity that's the difference between these two the next question we have is what languages does aws lambda support so your uh, lambda supports a variety of programming languages that we can use to create our lambda function so it supports node.js python um, ruby java go dot net you can also create your own custom runtime environments if you want so whenever you are creating this lambda function that is where you can choose the uh, programming language that you want so here you can see these are the different different options here so you have dot net go java node.js python ruby and you can also have your own um, custom run environments that you can create uh, yeah this one you can see these options so you can use this to create your own custom uh, set up custom environments to um, run your uh, lambda function so it supports a variety of programming language so whatever you're comfortable with you can choose and uh, um, execute your uh, lambda functions the next question you have is how can you manage the state in uh, aws lambda functions now um, it is not possible to manage the state because your lambda functions are stateless your lambda functions does not store any uh, data within within the service so it is completely stateless however if you still want to uh, store the data we will have to leverage other um, uh, services like the dynamo db or the rds or any other storage solutions to store the uh, data and then we can refer the data at any point you want However, by default it is stateless we won't, we don't get the data the next question you have is what is the deployment package in uh, aws lambda now whenever we create the uh, lambda functions uh, lambda creates a zip archive for us now this uh, zip archive will contain the code that we have uploaded and any other dependencies that we have provided now this zip archive this will basically contain uh, everything needed for uh, the lambda function to run so this deployment package it's simply a zip archive which um, your lambda function utilizes to run your code so this is uploaded to aws lambda during the function creation or update so we don't have to worry about creating this zip archive uh, lambda handles that for us so whenever we create our lambda function so here you can see uh, the uh, package type it says zip so we just create the function but in the back end aws will convert that into a zip archive and that zip archive will contain everything required for this lambda function to operate all right uh, that's basically what your deployment package is the next question you have is how does aws handle uh, sorry the aws lambda handle the concurrency now aws lambda it uh, um, uh, handles your uh, horizontal scaling to handle your uh, concurrency or your incoming request so like i said we don't have to manage the capacity all right we can define um, as to um, um, if you want you have the option of specifying the memory that you want to use but by default we don't have to worry about that so your lambda will take care of automatically scaling the capacity horizontally to handle your any incoming request so each function execution it is independent so every time we trigger a lambda function the lambda functions are independent of each other and uh, we can run multiple instances of a, a lambda function to handle the concurrency uh, or to handle your increased load so let's say you have uh, too much of load coming on your uh, lambda function so we can trigger multiple lambda functions to handle this load and each of these function these are independent of each other and that is how you can handle the concurrency um, for your uh, increased load the next question we have is can aws lambda functions access resources inside a vpc so yeah we have the option of integrating our uh, lambda functions with the uh, vpc service so if you have any resources running inside a vpc or if you want to have a private uh, connectivity with your uh, resources uh, we can integrate your lambda functions to 
access the resources running inside a VPC. For example, let's say you might have a database running inside the VPC and you want your Lambda to um, access that uh, database. So we can uh, um, integrate your Lambda function with your uh, VPC. So for example, um, here when you're creating your function, you have the option of um, specifying your VPC. And also after you're done creating your function, you should be able to see. So if I go to configuration here, VPC, you have the option of specifying um, which VPC you want to integrate with your Lambda function. So we can do that. The next question we have is, uh, what is the cold start issue in AWS Lambda and how can we mitigate that? Now, your cold start issue is simply the latency or the time taken to uh, start the execution of your Lambda function the first time or after la the Lambda function being idle uh, for a certain duration. So it's basically the time taken or the time uh, latency to start the execution of your Lambda function. We call that issue as your cold start issue. Now, how do we uh, mitigate that? To mitigate, mitigate this, we can make use of your provisioned concurrency or we can make use of any warm-up techniques or we can also consider using AWS Lambda's provision concurrency feature. So Lambda has certain features that we can use to uh, mitigate this cold uh, start issue that you might sometimes you might see wherein uh, though we have started the execution but your Lambda takes time to execute the Lambda function. So there you have it. That's about uh, top 10 interview questions that you can expect um, as part of your um, Lambda service. Um, so that's your rapid rapid fire exploration of uh, AWS Lambda interview questions. Whether you're preparing for an interview or just expanding your um, Lambda wisdom, this uh, should be uh, sufficient. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe for a more AWS insights and hit that bell icon to stay notified. Uh, drop your Lambda questions or topics in the comment section um, that you want me to cover. Until next time, happy learning.